Hey everyone, Derek again from the Mock Family Resource Center in Fitchburg. Today I'm going to do a video about the equipment that you're going to need to go ice fishing. Um, the ice is coming, the cold weather's here, so the lakes and ponds are going to start to freeze. Um, maybe not until the end of the month, beginning of next month, but it's still nice to start getting your stuff ready if you're planning on doing some ice fishing. Ice fishing's fun because it gets you out during the winter time and it uh, keeps you fishing, if fishing's something you love to do. So some of the equipment is similar, um, just on a smaller scale and you'll see that later on in this video. And some of it's very different compared to what you're using when you're fishing open water. So I'll go over line, tackle, um, setups and all that stuff. Um, again, if you have any questions about anything I go over, definitely put it in the comments below, but um, enjoy. So to ice fish, you drill a hole in the ice and then you put a line down the hole and you wait for a fish to come. So there's a variety of ways to do that. Most common is people use what are called tip-ups. You can call them tip-ups, you can call them traps, you can call them tilts. Um, I call them traps, so if you hear me say trap throughout this video, just know it means tip-up. Um, but tip-up is usually the more commonly referred to term for them. If you're looking for them online to buy some, usually type in tip-up. Um, but in talking with people, you can either say tip up, tilt, or trap. Um, so there's a lot of different traps out there. Um, they look different, but they do the same thing. Um, they might work a little bit differently, but the idea behind them is all the same. Um, so the most common type of trap that people use is what's called a stick trap. Um, it sets up like this in an X this part goes down in the ice this sits on top of the ice and then you have your flag so the way a tip up works is you have your flag you hook your flag on here when you get a fish it's gonna turn this and your flag is gonna go up and that's how you know you have a fish on because you'll see your flag um, so these are probably like I said the most common type of tip up that people use is a stick tile style tip up um, Walmart sells them this is where I got these um, this is a pretty big spool holds a lot of line um, these I have set up for pike which I'll show you later um, and then you have what's known as polar tip-ups. Now polar tip-ups can either be plastic or they can be wood. This is a wooden polar tip-up. Um, the plastic ones look exactly the same only they're a little bit smaller and made out of plastic. Um, polar tip-ups are probably the most economical way to go, the plastic ones. They're a lot cheaper than buying these wooden tip-ups. You can get um, a plastic polar tip up for like six to ten dollars if you can find them at Walmart um, so this is the part that goes in the water you have this that stays above the water your flag hooks on here and then when a fish takes your line this will spin and your flag will go up to let you know you have a fish now usually there's two different settings on here this wider setting right here, this wider gap is for windy days. So if you don't want your flag to trip as easily, you'll put it in there. This smaller one is for days where there's no wind or if you're fishing for a sensitive fish like a trout, um, something that's you know not gonna really pull too hard, um, you can set it on this lighter setting. Um, so the flag will go up a little bit easier. So these are your polar tip-ups. This looks like a polar tip-up, but this is actually an H-style trap. Um, these are my favorite kind of traps to use. Um, I just like the design of them. They just flip out, tighten it down. They're just easier to use. And I like wooden tip-ups. They're a little bit more rugged. 
um, and they're classics. Um, so the way this one works, pull your flag out, pull it down, there's a hook right here, hook it right there, and then again, fish takes your line, your spool is going to move, it's going to trip that flag, and that's how you know you have a fish. Like I said, these are probably my favorite style of tip up, um, just because of how easy they are to set up. You just fold it out and you're ready to go. Um, those you can also find at Walmart, um, Cabela's, Dick's. Um, the good thing about living in New England is a lot of people ice fish, so it's not hard to find um, the equipment that you need to do it. These, we call them circle traps, um, circle tip-ups, whatever you want to say. Um, works the same as your polar style tip-up. It's got the piece that flips down on the bottom. It's got your flag holder up here. You just pull your flag out. There's a little space right here, the bigger space. want to make sure that that little claw goes right in that bigger hole right there. And then set it underneath there. When fish takes your line, spins the reel, up goes the flag. Um, that's what's fun about ice fishing. Um, it's a lot of sitting around and waiting, but um, if you do it with other people, it's a good time to socialize, catch up with people. But it's also fun to see a flag go off um, you know and then you run to your flag you get all excited you don't know what's on it um, so it can be a good time this is a spider tip up these are pretty unique I don't see them a lot I found them on Amazon a few years ago thought they were cool I have this these are set up for trout because they're a little smaller um, but again it's pretty much the same as your polar tip up just a different design you have your flag Hold your flag down, set it on there, fish takes your line, your flag pops up. Then this is another version of a stick style tip up. Um, it works with magnets. So right here, you can see there's a little piece of metal right here. And then this piece is set in here with a magnet on the bottom so you put this down and it stays in place because of the magnet when a fish takes your line moves and it comes up cool thing about these is there's a little hole in the top and you can stick a little glow stick in there so if you're fishing after dark or early morning this will, the glow stick will go in here and it'll glow. So you'll be able to see your line even in the dark. So that's pretty convenient. These can be kind of finicky, um, but again, just another different kind of tip up you can use. Like I said, the plastic polar tip ups are gonna be your most economical choice, especially if you're a beginner. Um, go out, buy a few of those, get used to it. Um, Celsius sells really small, stick style tip ups for like five dollars each um, those aren't bad but Walmart usually has pretty good prices on tip ups whether you want stick tip ups whether you want H style tip ups the wooden polar tip ups um, you can find them at Walmart like I said Dick's Cabela's um, but they get a little bit more expensive the bigger they get the higher quality they get so if you're a beginner just go with you know simple setup some polar style tip ups and you should be good to go All right, so line you're gonna use for your tip up. You're gonna wanna get a specific tip up backing line. Um, usually when you're out fishing in open water, you're either using braided line or you're gonna use something like this, like a monofilament, something that's nylon. Um, you're gonna use this too. Um, on your jig sticks, you're gonna use regular ice line so it's made the same but it's made to not freeze um, or at least 
be able to withstand lower temperatures with resisting freezing. Um, but on your tip-ups, you're going to want some backing lines. So there's a couple different things you can use. Um, places sell this stuff. Um, I have this on a lot of my setups. It's um, a cloth line. It's nylon. Um, it's pretty sturdy, pretty thick, pretty strong. Um, you can also buy this stuff. Um, Walmart, um, Dick's, Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, they all carry it. Um, and then this is a spool of Dacron or braided line. Um, it depends how much line and how thick um, you're going to want on there. I usually stick with um, anywhere from 20 to 50 pound tip up line. As you can see, this one right here says it's 45 pounds and there's 150 yards of it. Um, Sometimes I'll go as low as 15, but I like to stay between 20 and 50 because I target big, bigger fish throughout the season. So um, the heavier your line, um, the bigger the fish you can catch. So with this braid or Dacron line, um, it's thinner but stronger. So sometimes I like to put this on my setups because I can get more line on there. If you're fishing for a fish like pike um, and big pike, they like to take a lot of line. So it's nice to be able to fill up your line and take up a less amount of space with a stronger line. So braid or Dacron is good for that. Um, it's thinner, so it can hurt your hands a little bit, um, especially if you're not wearing gloves. But um, like I said, I like it because it can be economical. You can get a lot more um, and it's thinner. Um, but this tip up line isn't bad either. Um, you can find it anywhere. Like I said, it's nice and thick. It gets the job done. So um, those are the types of backing line you're going to want to use. This is another version of it. Um, some nylon line, as you can see, 50 pounds, 300 yards. Um, the more yards you get on a spool, the more expensive it's going to be. But I like to buy um, more line just so I have some. Or like I said, if I have a bigger spool, I can fill it up a little bit more. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like on the tip up. And then I'll show you how to put your, your monofilament on the tip up. So what we have here is a wooden polar style tip up. Um, these are nice. They work pretty easily, um, but this one has Dacron on it. So you can see it's a little bit thinner and there's 150 yards of it on here. It filled this whole spool. So if a fish takes it and wants to run with it, you're not going to have to worry too much about it getting spooled out because you have so much line on there. Again, same style tip up, but this has your regular nylon tip up line on it. It's this Celsius brand tip up line. As you can see, it's a little bit thicker than the Dacron and there's actually only 50 yards of it on here. So that, you know, obviously makes a difference with how much line you can put on there, the thickness and the type of line you put as backing line. But like I said, you can use either one. It's just your preference. Um, we tend to use a combination of both depending on what we find when we're out and about looking for line. Um, and it also depends what species you're targeting. So bass aren't really going to go very far. So if you only have 50 pounds of line, on, I mean 50 yards of line on here, it's not going to make a huge difference. But like I said before, something like a pike who's going to swallow that bait and might run 50 to 100 yards with it and give you a fight, you're going to want a little bit more line on there. Now to put line on here, um, fortunately with these, there's an easy way to do it. Um, most times I just use my hand, I pull it nice and tight and put it on here by hand, um, just wrapping it around. Fortunately with these style tip ups, you're able to use a drill. So you can clamp a drill right on the end here and drill it right on. So we have our drill attached on here. And what we do, would do is you would just hold the line in this hand 
and kind of guide it on there while you use your drill to spin it. That way your hand isn't cramping up trying to spin all this line on here. Um, it's easier, it's convenient. You can't do it with all style tip ups, um, mostly polar tip ups. You're going to be able to do that. Other style tip ups, um, unfortunately, it's not as easy and you pretty much have to do it by hand. All right, now that you have your tip up line on, you're going to want to put on some leader line. Um, I use monofilament usually. Um, sometimes I'll use fluorocarbon on my trout rigs just because trout are a little line shy. So the monofilament um, can be a little too thick and they can see it a little bit too easily. So um, sometimes I won't use mono on my trout rigs. Um, but these I'm setting up for my wife and they're just for bass. Um, so we don't have to worry about it. We're just gonna use a regular 20 pound mono. Um, you can use six, eight, 10, how, I just have 20 on hand because that's what we use for our pike setups and bass aren't line shy at all so it doesn't matter if you have 20 pound on there or 8 pound on there they're not going to be scared away by it. A couple things that we need obviously some scissors or line cutters to cut our line, our monofilament, a button um, preferably with two holes, hooks you have a couple different hooks. I like to use red hooks um, just because sometimes it can make it look like blood in the water and it can attract a fish. And then this is just regular gold hook. Um, you can use barbed or barbless, it doesn't matter. And then these are what are called barrel swivels. Um, they come in all different shapes, um, sizes. Um, make sure they're rated for high poundage so I like to get 20 pound or more um, that's just the amount of stress that you can put on the barrel swivel before it breaks so um, the higher the better um, so what I do is I take a button so when you're ice fishing you're gonna have to find the depth um, which I'll show you in a future video and it's easier to remember what depth you've set your tip up to if you have one of these buttons. So you're just going to take your line, if it'll cooperate with me, put it through your button. pull it down so now you've got a button on there so once you find out what your depth is you pull this button up and set it to where your depth is that way you don't have to worry about sounding your hole every time and finding the depth every time this will let you know um, you can also use these little bobbers so when you find your depth you just take this little bobber and you hook it on here and then that lets you know where your depth is and it's not going to affect how you're fishing at all. Um, the buttons are just more convenient because they're on there all the time. You don't have to worry about lugging around a bunch of uh, tiny little bobbers. So this tip up line can get frayed and become kind of difficult to work with. So if it becomes frayed and won't you know, fit through the holes or anything, just snip the end off. So we're going to take one of these barrel swivels, um, it has an open loop on each end. So we're going to attach it to our tip up line. Um, you're going to tie it on there the same way you tie a hook on. Um, I like to make a loop around my finger, um, put the line around itself a couple times. Then I take the line, put it back through that loop. and then tighten it all down. Then grab your swivel, pull it tight. Always cut your tag ends off. You don't wanna leave those on there. All right, 
take your mono, put it through the other loop or the other hole in the barrel swivel, and again, just tie it on like you're tying a hook. And pull it tight. There you go. All right. And then I usually leave maybe two feet. So cut two feet of line off. Then take your hook. Tie your hook on there. Mono is kind of stiff. All right, and pull it tight. Now you're ready to fish. These are what are called sounders. So these you use to find out how deep the part of the lake or pond is that you're fishing. Um, as you can see, they come in lots of different varieties. Uh, this one's a lighter one uh, with like an alligator clip on it. You can see the paint's chipped off. It's pretty well used. Um, what you can do is if the paint comes off or sometimes they come with no paint on them, you can use nail polish, um, put a couple coats of nail polish on there so you can make it whatever color you want. Um, they tend to come in bright colors because you're going to be on snow or ice. So if you drop one, um, it'll stand out if you're looking for it. Um, these um, are rubber coated, these ones. Um, so it's not paint, it's rubber. Um, they come in pink, orange, yellow, green, whatever color um, you find. The color doesn't really matter. Um, the heft of it doesn't really matter either. Um, any size will work. Um, these tend to go missing a lot. You're gonna use, uh, lose a good amount of them. I've lost a ton of them. Um, whether they fall, you can clip them on your pocket um, when you're walking around, that way you always have one, but sometimes something might knock it off, it might fall, you don't realize it, you lost a sounder. Um, it's fine, they're cheap, you can get them for um, a couple bucks um, for a two or three pack. They're not very expensive, but they're a must have. So the way these work is you take your hook on your trap and you can either go through this hole on the sounder like that and clip it on there. I like to clip it up a little higher um, just because you want a little bit more surface area. So clip, just clip it on your hook. With these, if you have a leader like that, it's better to clip it right on the leader. Um, and then take your line and you drop it down the hole. And it's just gonna, you just let it keep going and keep going until it hits the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, you're going to see that slack line and then that's how you're going to know you've hit bottom so depending on what type of fish you're fishing for usually we fish about a foot off the bottom um, sometimes three feet so anywhere from one to three feet off the bottom you can kind of guesstimate um, trout tend to be a little bit higher um, closer to the ice other fish ambush fish like bass or pickerel or pike tend to be a little bit lower um, but this is just to get a starting point. So once you find where, once you use your founder and you find where bottom is, that's what these buttons are for. So once you find bottom, you're gonna pull in your slack until the line is tight, then take this button and move it down to where it's right at the top of the ice. Then this marks your depth. So you know that every time your button's gonna be right where the depth is. So these are 
pretty nice to have. Like I said, they're cheap, so stock up on them. All right, now that your line's all on there, your hook's on there, you're all set, you're gonna wanna find a way to keep your hook in place. Um, you can just hook it right back on to the line. I don't like to do that because then it's cutting into the line and it kind of, you know, degrades the line and you might not have as strong a line as you should. Um, they do sell hook keepers. Um, they're usually five to ten dollars. It's just a Velcro strap with a rivet in it. You hook the hook onto the rivet, wrap it around your um, tip up, and you're all set around your spool. So what I like to do is I keep these when I buy lettuce at the grocery store. This one came off romaine, um, green leaf lettuce, red leaf lettuce all has it on there. Um, this one says green leaf on it. Um, so they're nice to hang on to if you're an ice fisherman and they make perfect hook keepers. There's already a little hole up here for the hook. So you're just going to want to take your hook, put it right through there, take your line, wrap it around, take your Velcro, wrap it around, now your hook's not going anywhere and you don't have to worry about tangles when you get out on the ice. Um, that's one of the things the first few years I was ice fishing I learned slowed me down a lot was untangling all my traps once I got out on the ice because my hooks are all over the place so these are great in saving time it also just helps keep you organized um, like I said you can um, take your hook and like this and just kind of bury it in the line like so um, but that like I said is gonna deteriorate the line and make it less strong so um, these are perfect you can use hair ties to keep your line down um, you can use zip ties but you're probably gonna have to replace the zip tie every time some tip-ups have little places to hook them on to um, but this I find is the most effective um, and it's pretty easy and it's recycling so that's nice too Another thing some people do that I like to try to do, um, not everybody does it, but um, put my name on the flags. Um, you could put it anywhere on the trap, but it usually tends to be easier to put it right on flag. Um, this is just in case you're lugging your traps and you drop one um, and you don't know it or sometimes you have to clean up pretty quick because a storm's coming through or something and you might forget one um, in a hole, you might forget to pick it up. That's very rare that that happens, but just in case with the age of social media, um, Facebook and stuff like that, if your name's on your trap, someone um, fishing that pond is likely to be local and they can just look your name up online um, on Facebook, shoot you a message, say, hey, I think I have your trap and then you can go pick up your trap. Um, most people are pretty good about it. Um, I've rarely ran into people who aren't nice and willing to help if you lose something or um, something breaks to help you out. Um, the community is a pretty good community, so um, it's nice to put your name on these traps. Um, if you lose one while you're out on the ice, if you drop it somewhere, if you forget it, um, people are usually pretty good about finding those and reaching out to you to let you know that you left one. So put your name on there somewhere. Um, you can put it and write it on one of these. Um, you can write it on the bottom of your polar tip ups. Um, just put it somewhere. Um, if you're someone who's private, doesn't want your name on your traps, that's fine. Um, but like I said, I spend a lot of money on this stuff. So if I lose one and can get it back, I'd prefer that. Um, so. It's a nice little habit to get into if that's something that you want to do with your traps. All right, so I showed you a tip up that's set up for bass. Um, this trap I have set up for pike. So pike are big, they have teeth.
they're strong they'll rip off a lot of line um, so you want a bigger spool this spool is pretty big um, I got these at Walmart I think they were only $15 so pretty good price for the size there's about 300 yards of line on here um, probably a little overkill but it's Dacron line so you can see it's not even really covering the whole spool which is nice um, but for pike seeing they have teeth you want a steel leader so this leader is a steel wire and it's wrapped in uh, like plastic so and it's got the same hook that we used before you clamp the hook on there with the swivel um, but again it's set up the same way as our bass setup is so you have your 20 pound mono on there attached to your Dacron with the barrel swivel and then at the end of your mono you just put a steel leader you can fish for pike without a steel leader but it's more difficult because like I said they have teeth so they can bite that bait and just bite right through your line and then you lost a fish you lost a hook and you lost your bait so using the steel leader um, is definitely a must when you're fishing for pike musky we don't really have musky around here um, I think Lake Quinn Sigamon might have musky and Quaybog might have musky they used to stock them um, but pike there's Indian Lake in Worcester, Lake Quinsig out in the Worcester area, and Quaybog out in the East Brookfield area all have Northern Pike. Um, they're fun, they're finicky, you really got to work hard to catch them, um, but like I said they're big. People have pulled out some pretty big ones over the years in um, Indian Lake. Uh, a couple years ago somebody caught I think an 18 pounder. Um, so they're in there you just got to find them you got to work for them but um, like I said the setup for a pike make sure you have a steel leader so for trout you want to set things up a little bit differently this is a plastic polar style tip up like I said they're cheap economical um, easy to use so I have my smaller tip up set up for trout um, what you want to do for trout is just lighter line see how much thinner this line is compared to the line that we were using for bass this is four pound line so it's set up exactly the same way you got your backing tip up line you got a swivel and then you have your fluorocarbon I use fluorocarbon for trout just because they see it a lot less easily in the water and trout are very finicky that's why you want to use lighter line when you're fishing for trout um, they see the line better they're line shy so if they see the line they're not even going to come look at your bait so you want to make sure that you're using a nice light line or if you're not using you know I like to use four pound that's what I fish open water with ultralight four pound um, but you can use heavier line like heavier tests just make sure it's a nice light invisible type fluorocarbon um, like I said trout are very finicky also the other difference a smaller hook um, trout don't have big mouths like bass and pike and perch and stuff like that they have very small mouths um, so you're gonna want to use a smaller hook and smaller bait um, you don't need a big bait to catch a big trout you just need to present it in the right way one of the other more common ways to catch fish through the ice is by jigging so when you jig you're gonna use what's called the jig stick or an ice fishing rod um, we usually call them jig sticks um, they come in various lengths I like mine a little bit shorter um, that's just my preference but um, they come in 
you know this one I think is 24 inches you can get 36 and even bigger than that um, and all different kinds of reels so this reel is an inline reel it's a fly fishing reel that I just made into a jig stick um, these are nice because there's no line twist it keeps the line nice and straight this is my favorite one to use um, there's no drag on it so you have to make sure you're right on top of it in case a fish takes it because it'll just peel out lines so you got to be careful about that um, but the way these work is you have jigs so this is a jig there's lots of different types of jigs out there um, and you drop it down below the ice usually you put like a worm or um, we call them spikes but they're maggots you put that on there and then you just jig it up and down like that so the fish thinks that you know it's looking at bait so you want to just kind of jig it like that right under the ice you can also so this again is um, like a spin cast reel you just push the button and the line comes out um, this has two pound test on it all my other ones have four pound um, and it's ice line so you can buy stuff called ice line it's less likely to freeze up in the ice um, so it's less likely to freeze your reel up which is nice again pretty short um, it'll tell you right here the specs on it this one is a 22 inch ultralight this one has a hook on it because I'll put live bait on this so I'll put a shiner on the end of this this is a slip bobber so the bobber moves up and down on the line and then I also have on here one of these bobber stoppers what a bobber stopper does is it's kind of self-explanatory but it'll stop this bobber from going any further down your line than right there it's just convenient when you're fishing at a certain depth and you want to make sure um, when a fish takes it that bobber stopper is going to hit the top of that bobber and pull it underwater that way you know you have a fish if you don't have that bobber stopper you're never really going to know you have a fish unless you're fully paying attention to the end of your rod and going like that um, so with slip bobbers bobber stoppers are super important and then again this is just your basic um, spinning reel um, most of your jig sticks you buy in the stores at Dick's Walmart Cabela's Bass Pro they're gonna come with one of these on it you can get an inline reel they're a little bit more expensive um, but they're nicer um, like I said less line twist and things like that but just basic you can pick up a basic jig stick set up just like this that looks just like this for like 10 or 15 dollars um, this is called a Swedish pimple it's just another kind of jig um, it's like a spoon again you jig it up and down this is a styrofoam bobber these are nice they're pretty cheap it just clips onto the line and then it'll float on the water and again I have a bobber stopper on here so when a fish takes it you'll no, because the bobber stopper will take the bobber under the water um, so jigging is fairly simple like you just drill a hole put your line down and jig it up and down what you want to do is try to send your line down um, till it hits the bottom then reel it up probably about a foot off the bottom and then go from there if you're not getting any bites at a foot off the bottom reel it up a couple more times find where those fish are then just jig it up and down in that hole we've caught a bucket full like a five gallon bucket full of yellow perch one day just jigging um, it's easier to catch panfish jigging because they move in schools 
Um, so once a school finds a place where it knows there's food, it'll stay there for a little while. So if you find a school, you and a couple friends can go down the same hole or drill a couple more holes in the area and you guys could be pulling fish out for a solid 10 minutes. Um, and it's fun. Jigging can be really fun if the fish are biting and if that's the type of bait that they're interested in that day. Um, so yeah, any one of these setups works great. Um, it's all your preference. It's all what you can afford at the time. Um, like I said before, if you're a beginner, just start out easy. Um, you know, you don't need to be spending a lot of money right off the bat. Um, you can still fish by, you know, using a minimal budget. One of the next important things is storage and transportation of your gear. Um, most people honestly just use a bucket. Um, your tip-ups and everything will fit in a bucket. Um, it's just a regular five gallon bucket. You can put big sticks in there. Everything's right in there. And the plus of using a bucket is once your gear is out of it, you flip it over, you have a seat. Um, also, it's a nice way to be able to have water. If you're keeping fish for a tournament and need to weigh them in, you fill the bucket with water, throw the fish in there, bring it to be weighed in. Also, if you're taking fish home, it's nice. Fill it with some snow, a little bit of ice, throw your fish in there, and it'll keep them nice and cold. Um, you can also get a nice sturdy backpack. This is where I keep my trout rods. They're smaller, so they fit in this nice little backpack, but there's plenty of room. There's straps, there's a handle. Um, hiking backpacks work well um, if they're big enough, have enough space. One of the old school ways to carry your traps, which is how my wife and I carry our traps, is with pack baskets. So this is a pack basket. It's a wicker basket. This one was made in Maine. Um, they're expensive, but they're nice and they'll last you a while if you take good care of them. They don't come with a liner, so you're going to have to buy a liner. But, um, like I said, these were originally used by trappers. People who were trapping beaver, um, mink, stuff like that. This is what they kept their trapping equipment in. Ice fishermen started to use them um, because it's just as convenient to keep your traps and stuff in here too for ice fishing like I said you're gonna want one of these liners it's gonna cost you a little more but um it's gonna help keep the longevity of your pack basket um, this one's my wife's it's brand new got it last year um, like I said they're expensive but they're nice. it's my pack basket Mine is a hand-me-down. Um, this is actually like a pretty proud heirloom for me. My cousin got me started out ice fishing. He's the first person who ever took me and to kind of initiate me, he gave me this pack basket, which has been passed down to him. Um, so this was a special gift for me. Um, it's getting a little beat up now, it's pretty old. Um, so I might retire it and save it to pass down to my son and get myself a new pack basket. But again, holds a ton of traps. These aren't even all my traps, but um, holds a good amount of traps. Um, but just a simple bucket, like I said, if you're starting out, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, go to Home Depot, go to Walmart, get yourself a bucket, holds everything in there. Um, and it's the easy way to go. Like I said, doubles as a chair. Um, pretty cheap. I think they're like two or three dollars at Walmart, and uh, it'll hold all your stuff. So for your jig rods, they sell bags like this. Um, you can either put rods or traps in here. Um, so. This is where I keep all my jig sticks. This is my jaw jacker. Um, I'll show you how that works in another video. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's like a tip up for your jig sticks. Um, so the jig sticks just kind of sit in there like that. 
zip it up. But it's also nice because it has these side compartments. Um, I think I got this one at Walmart and it was like 15 dollars But this holds all my gear, my jigs, my terminal tackle, line clippers, bait hooks, like sounders. Everything's right in here. Um, there's two pockets, one on either side. Sell stuff like this too. Um, my wife's is from Cabela's, but it has a little nylon pocket. I've got spare auger blades in here, and these are spare studs for my boots in case they wear down or fall out. Um, all that stuff I'll show you too. But these are nice and convenient. They hold uh, six to eight rods. My jaw jacker's in there too. Um, so if you can find them and if you can get it for a good price, they're definitely good to have. Um, I'm glad I invested in it because sometimes if your jig sticks are just hanging out in your sled or in your bucket, they can get all tangled. So it's nice to be able to organize them. All right, you're probably wondering how you're gonna get all this stuff out on the ice. Well, we use sleds. So this is a jet sled. It's thick plastic. This is the smaller version. This is the Jet Sled Junior. They make much, much bigger ones. Um, but when you're starting out and you don't have a lot of gear, this is probably perfect. I think you can pick them up for 20 bucks. When I first started, I just used a uh, kid's snow sled from Walmart. They're usually pretty cheap, five or ten bucks, and it works. It'll hold your stuff. So you can throw your bucket in there. Um, you can fit a chair in here. Um, your auger will usually fit in here. It'll probably hang out, but um, it'll fit in here. So these are convenient. Then you just drag it out there on the ice. You don't have to worry about carrying it in your arms. Um, pretty easy. Any backpacker, something like pack basket you're gonna use to hold your traps, obviously you can carry that on your back. Sometimes it's just easier to throw it in a sled and drag it out there. Like I said, these are nice, they're convenient. The bigger they get, the more expensive they get. But um, for a beginner, this little one's probably perfect. Or like I said, go to Walmart, Target, somewhere that sells kids sleds for sledding in the snow and just buy one of those. They work just as good. All right, so now how do you drill a hole? So most people use an auger. This is an ice auger. It's got a handle on the end. Um, the way it works is you put that end on the ice and then you push down on this end and you spin this and it cuts down through the ice. Um, you want to make sure you keep this blade protector on because these blades get really blades on the bottom that cut through the ice. Um, like I said, you want to be very careful. Make sure you keep this blade protector on. Um, I've had, I've seen blades go through boots, pants, so you want to be very careful. They also make gas powered augers. We have a battery powered auger, which I can show you as well. Um, it's super convenient, super easy, easy to use, but very, very expensive. Um, those power augers, electric gas, propane, they anywhere from like $500 and up. Um, so I think ours was $600. So these though, you can get for like 40, 50 bucks. You can find them on Craigslist, on the Facebook marketplace. People sell them, get rid of them, trade for them, whatever. This is an eight inch, so it'll cut an eight inch hole. They come in four inch, six inch, eight inch, 10 inch, and sometimes even 12 or bigger. Um, usually six or eight is fine for fish around here. Um, we had some 
difficulty getting a bass through a six inch hole so we started using this eight inch so um, eight inch is probably the sweet spot if you get a big enough bass you want to make sure you can get it through the hole um, but I've fished six inch for a long time that was my original auger um, both were hand-me-downs um, once you get in the community and you know people they like to help new fishermen um, so sometimes if they got a new power auger they have their old hand auger and you're just looking for something easy simple to use cheap you can either trade maybe they'll give it to you um, but it's all about building community and helping out the next generation and spreading that love of fishing and getting out on the ice so they're easy to find like I said brand new you can get one for like 40 or 50 bucks um, so not too bad all right so this is our battery auger um, battery is attached right here pops off charge it we have two batteries clips in comes with an allen wrench on the bottom Put those on the auger blade there's a bolt in here that's how you bolt this thing onto it this is the auger blade this is a 10 inch again it's got blades on the bottom um, these blades look a little different that little diamond point helps keep it in place um, cuts really fast really clean um, minimal effort so, Definitely a nice investment if you're, you know, a seasoned fisherman and don't feel like hand drilling holes anymore. Um, so the way it works is once it's attached, you hold it over the ice like this. Backwards. Hold it over the ice like this. There's a trigger right here and a power button right here. Push the power button down. Pull the trigger and it'll spin with the auger blade on it'll drill right through there's also forward and reverse so forward you drill down put it in reverse and take it back out like i said these are expensive there's also lights on the bottom if you're fishing at night early morning you need to see where you're drilling your hole these lights are nice this is expensive um not everyone is going to be using one of these if the ice you know is a foot or so thick it's pretty easy to drill through by hand so start off with a hand auger especially if you don't know if you like ice fishing yet and then once you know um, if you're gonna get more into the sport then you can invest in one of these or one of the gas powered propane powered augers um, but like I said if you want to invest in these they're definitely very nice and very easy to use Another way people put holes in the ice is with a chisel. Um, I call it a spud bar. That's just what I learned calling it. Um, so for me, it's a spud bar, but it's essentially just a big old chisel. Um, you're gonna want to make sure you have rope on the end and that it's wrapped around when you're chiseling. Because if you go through the ice, you could let go, and you don't want to lose this down a hole. Um, these again. 20 to 50 bucks if you can find them um, they're time consuming especially if the ice is really thick it could take you a while to chip a hole in the ice what I use this for mainly is safety so my first time out on the ice for the year I bring this with me every couple of steps I take I'm chipping away at the ice in front of me before I move forward if it goes through after a couple chips, maybe the ice isn't so safe. Check how thick it is. Um, if it takes you a while and you still haven't gotten through the ice, then you're usually okay. But I bring this with me every time because you never know what the ice conditions are gonna be. They can change daily. So it's nice. Just use it as a walking stick. Stab it in there as you're walking forward. Make sure there's no soft or suspicious ice. Just keep yourself safe. Another way I use this is if I know I'm going back to the same spot the next day and it was a warmer night, 
maybe the ice didn't fully freeze back over you can use this to chip out the same holes that you used the day before that way you don't have to do any drilling um, and these will usually go right through those old holes so um, so like I said a little cumbersome a little time consuming if you're gonna use it to drill your original hole but if you're reopening holes not so bad and once you drill your holes there's going to be some slush in there left over from the drilling process um, so you're going to want one of these it's a scoop looks like a giant soup ladle with holes in it um, all you do is you put it in that hole scoop out the ice the water comes out leaves the ice in here then you just throw the ice to the side they all pretty much look like this they can come in plastic metal this one has a little chisel at the end so um, if it's a cold day you're gonna want to check your holes every once in a while not just to make sure your bait's still alive but to make sure your hole hasn't frozen over if there's a thin layer of ice you just take this little chisel on the end chip that ice away scoop it out and you don't have to worry about your hole being frozen over anymore um, on really cold days I check my traps and my holes probably every 20 to 30 minutes just to make sure um, this is another style of scoop so when you put it in the water it folds up like this because the resistance of the water pushing against it once it gets through the hole and under the water when you pull up it opens up same thing water comes out ice stays in there just chuck it to the side um, again these are pretty cheap you can get them five to ten dollars you don't have to go too crazy you can get a little plastic one still does the same job um, and it's pretty economical now ice fishing you're going to be using some live bait so shiners suckers things like that so you're going to need something to hold that bait most people use a bucket this is pretty old school metal minnow bucket um, they come in plastic, uh, some with styrofoam inserts. Um, this one, the lid pops open. Oh, leftover shiner in there from last year. That's probably not good. Anyway, this one has a built in strainer bucket. So when it's full of shiners, that way you don't have to reach into the cold water. Pull this up, drains all the water out, and then you reach in there, pull out the shiner, put it back in the water, and they're underwater. Like I said, they come in plastic. Um, this is just a small little bait bucket I picked up at a bait shop for like five bucks. Um, you're gonna want a net. That way, like I said, you don't have to reach in there, get your hands cold and wet. Just scoop out your shiner with the net, pull it out of the net you're good to go they also make bait, bait boxes um, bait coolers you can use a cooler like a little lunchbox cooler if you want depending on how many shiners you're planning on using the thing with these you're gonna use an aerator it has a switch turns on what it does is it pumps oxygen into the water that way the fish don't run out of air in there um, from converting all the water to oxygen so um, these are nice they open up there's a net in here pull the net out grab the shiners put the net back in this is the bubbler where the air comes out of the aerator creates bubbles in there um, they sell them this size um, and they get much bigger. Mine is probably about twice the size of this just because I tend to buy a lot of shiners because um, I like to switch out bait if it's not you know looking like it's still alive or if it's not as active um, but you're gonna want some way to carry your bait. Again you can go out just buy a five gallon bucket from Walmart, Home Depot, something like that and use that as a bait bucket as well. Um, aeration isn't fully necessary um, but I usually fish all day when I go fishing so I want to make sure if I spend money on those shiners they're gonna stay alive 
So you can buy an aerator, Not it doesn't have to be this big. They sell little ones that run on a couple AA, AAA batteries. You can get one for like $5 at Walmart um, called the Bubble Box or something like that. Um, so you can get them cheap. Um, it's a nice investment. It'll help keep your shiners alive and active, but not necessary. Just as long as you have a bucket of some kind to keep your shiners in, you're usually good to go. One thing you can use with your jig sticks, especially if you're running live bait, are rod holders. So there's this style, it opens up like that and just sits on the ice like that. Um, and then there's this style, same thing, your rod goes in here, sits on the ice like that. Um, you don't have to be running live bait. You can run jigs on these too and just let it sit there like if you have something else. If you're jigging and you gotta go do something else like check a trap or um, drill holes or whatever it may be. Um, but these are nice to have in those situations. Another thing that's nice to have is one of these tiny collapsible shovels. So they open up, they're not super big, but um, they can help you clear, like if there's a lot of snow out there and you drill your hole, um, you can clear the snow and slush off the top of your hole before you use your scoop to scoop it out, just makes things easier. Also, if you feel like making a home base and don't want to be sitting in snow, have all your gear in snow, these are just a quick way to shovel everything out. They're nice and compact. They fit in your sled. They don't take up a lot of space. Um, they're usually like 10 or $15. So I think you can get them at Job Lot. Um, Walmart sometimes has them. So another solid investment if you can find them. Other things that might be beneficial to have or look into are like folding chairs, like camping chairs. Something that'll fold up nice, compact, fit on your sled. That way you're not standing around all day or have to sit on the ice. The ice and snow sucks body heat right out of you. So um, again, a bucket is a great idea, um, but the bucket can be a little hard on your body. So they sell these pads called heat of seats. Um, it takes in your radiant heat, puts it back out onto you, keeps you warm, but it also pads the bucket so it's not so harsh. Um, we have a pop-up shelter. Those are expensive, not a necessity unless you're fishing on really cold, windy, snowy day and you want to get out of the snow and the cold. Um, we also have a small heater that runs on propane. All this stuff, um, it all depends how much you want to spend, how into the sport you want to get. Um, but these are all things you can look into. Sometimes we'll bring like a little camping stove, cook breakfast or lunch out there. Um, some people bring fire pits and wood and they make fires out on the ice. So it's all how into it you want to get and what you want to invest your money into. Um, it can get fun. Um, it can definitely get out of hand with spending the money. I know I've sunk a lot of money into this sport, but it's something I love. It's something I do. It's something I look forward to. So um, it's all what's in your budget, what's in what you want to do and what you want to get out of the sport. So um, also you can bring um, like pop up canopies. Um, to shade you from the sun if you want to get out of the sun. Um, if you have an old like tent, um, rather than going out and buying, you know, these expensive pop-up shelters, you can bring a tent, just cut the bottom out of it. If it's an old tent that you're not really using anymore, um, cut the bottom out of it. That way, you know, you don't have to worry about walking on plastic and all that stuff. Um, and inside the tent or the hut, you can drill a jig hole so you can sit in there jigging. Um, and still keep kind of warm even if you don't have a heater if you're with a couple of people or even if it's a small enough tent and you're by yourself your body heat will help keep you warm in there as long as it's not too too cold um, so again it's all you know how much you want to spend how much you want to get into it I recommend as a beginner just start small start with the basic equipment go out for a couple hours drill a couple holes see what happens see if you like it um, my first trip out um, 
I didn't catch a whole lot. I caught my first northern pike, but it was really small. But it was the being with people. It was the atmosphere that we had, um, sitting around cooking food, laughing, joking, waiting on those flags to go off, checking traps. Um, it's just a fun experience, especially if you can do it with other people. I know we're in COVID times, so it might not be as easy to do it with other people. If you can, do it safely, socially, socially distance and all that stuff. Um, but you'll get out of it what you put into it. Not every day is going to be fun. You're not going to catch things every day. Um, but that, it's the same thing with every other thing we do in life, you know. Um, patience is key. And uh, hopefully you guys get into ice fishing and you enjoy it. All right, hopefully that video was helpful for you. Hopefully it sparked your interest in wanting to get out there and get ice fishing. It's my favorite thing to do. It's definitely my favorite outdoor sportsman season of the year. Um, I look forward to it every year. I look forward to setting everything up, getting all my gear ready. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And like I said before, it's something to do during the winter. Um, this was a lot of information to take in in one video. So if you have any questions, comments about anything, um, leave them in the comments down below. Like always, share, like, and subscribe the channel. Let your friends, family know about it. And until we see each other again, be safe, be healthy, and be good to one another.